Hey there, Emma. I need to have a little talk with you about your conduct around the office. Do you realize that you're just a regular employee, right? You're not a supervisor or a manager or anything like that. And yet, I've heard that you were chastising my daughter earlier today. No, I'm just curious what made you think that it was appropriate for someone in your position to go and do something like that. Hello, Mr. Sharp. I take it that you're talking to me about the conversation that I had with your daughter Lily earlier today, yes? Well, the thing is that she has been showing up to work almost an hour late every day for several weeks now. And while I'm not an official supervisor, I was tasked with looking after her while she learns the ropes of the job. So I was only trying to help her understand the importance of being at work on time. I wasn't trying to chastise or bully her, but I thought that she should know it wasn't okay to do that. In fact, I'm glad that you're reaching out to me about this. I was hoping that you could talk to her about this problem as well. What in the world are you talking about? You have got a lot of nerve even trying to talk to me, your boss, in that way. I'm sorry, did I say something wrong? I really wasn't trying to step on anyone's toes. It's just that I was told to show her the ropes. And now, my daughter is absolutely furious. Tell me, do you talk to my daughter in that same condescending tone when you try and show her the ropes? You should know that I'm her father, and I know very well that she's a capable worker who doesn't need someone of your standing telling her what to do. I'm sorry, but are you telling me that I shouldn't have told her to stop showing up to work so late every day? I'm the head of this division. Don't you think I'm already aware of when people are showing up on time and when they're late? If I had a problem with my daughter showing up late, then I would say something about it. Didn't that thought ever even cross your mind? I'm sorry, I'm really confused here. Are you telling me that you're okay with your daughter acting this way around the office? I'm telling you that you have got a lot of nerve thinking that you can go and yell at my daughter about how to do her job. You're nothing but a little peon in this company. You're a replaceable worker drone who seems to have forgotten their place. Mr. Sharp, I'm really sorry if I've done something wrong. I didn't mean to overstep my authority, but I don't think there's any need to talk to me like this. I only told your daughter what I said because I was tasked with showing her how things work around here. Can we please just calm down and try to think about this a little more rationally? I mean, would you be okay with any other employee showing up that late? You've warned plenty of others not to be late. I was only taking after your example. I don't care what you thought you were doing. The fact of the matter is that you talked to my daughter like that and now she's upset. So clearly, you don't know how to handle helping other employees if all you do is make them cry. What did you even say to her that made her so upset? Mr. Sharp, I really don't know what to say to this except that I feel that this anger is really uncalled for. I really don't think there's any need for you to get this upset over what I said to Lily. And I'm sorry, but I still don't understand why you're even this upset with me to begin with. I was asked to oversee Lily as she starts working here. I have seniority over her just by virtue of how long I've been in the office. I really can't see how I did anything that would be considered inappropriate given my position in the company. Well, it sounds to me like someone needs to remind you of how things work around here. Or are you just going to keep up this back talk until I have no choice but to fire you? Are you really threatening to fire me just over this? I think that's a little extreme, don't you? But if the problem you're having is that I was the one who spoke to your daughter about being at work on time, then maybe you could talk to her about this problem. I think she would be more likely to listen to you anyways. Does that sound agreeable to you? Oh, so now you're trying to tell me what to do as well? You really just don't know when to shut your mouth, do you? 
Okay. I see that I've misspoken, and I'll make sure that nothing like this happens again. I'll return to work now. How many times am I going to have this same talk with you? Huh? Well, last time was just that. As of today, you are fired from this job. Mr. Sharp, are you really going to fire me like this? Because if you're serious, then I suppose I'll have no alternative but to leave. But you do realize that you're doing this all because I'm gently informing your daughter of how to act in the office. Is that what you call all the horrible yelling and chastising of my daughter? I thought I already warned you about not doing that. But if you're not going to listen to a direct order from your real boss, then it's obvious I have no choice but to let you go. I just hope some trash like you learns how to listen to your superiors one day. Hmm. I guess we'll just have to see who the real piece of trash is, won't we? Excuse me? What did you just say to me? You think that just because I'm firing you means that you could talk to me however you want? I'm just saying that your daughter shows up to work late every single day. She never does any actual work when she's here, and I've only ever seen her on the phone. Are you really going to try and tell me that this isn't an employee in need of a talking to by someone? I'm telling you that you've no right to be lecturing my daughter over every little tiny mistake she might happen to make while working here. It's not your place and you need to learn some respect. You don't get to talk to people however you want just because you've worked here longer than them. I suppose we'll just have to agree to disagree on what the actual situation is. But if you want my opinion, you're being far too easy on Lily. And it seems to me like it might also be your fault why your daughter is seemingly incapable of changing her ways. So now you're going to try and blame all the problems you have with my daughter on me? I really don't think I've ever had to deal with such an uppity employee before. You know, your daughter actually told me the last time we talked that she was sick and tired of dealing with me and that she would have me fired. And now here you are, firing me. So I have to ask, is this because your daughter came to you and asked you to do this? And if she did, did she ever bother explaining to you why it is that she was being talked to by me in the first place? Oh, this problem is much bigger than just you and my daughter now. If you really think that you could talk to your boss the way that you've been talking to me, then it's clear that there's just no place for you here. I don't ever want you to even step foot into this office building again. Do you understand me? You are fired effective immediately. Well, okay then. If that's your final decision, then I won't spend any more time arguing my case. May I ask what you're going to tell HR and our managers about my firing? Because I think it might be difficult for you to merely be doing this because of how I treated your daughter. So, I'm just curious how you're going to present your case against me to the higher-ups in our office. And just why in the world do you think I would type out everything I'm going to say to them here for you to read? I'll find a good excuse to tell them that will make them all go along with my decision. I'm in charge of this department, and what I say goes. The only person at fault here is you for daring to try and argue with me after I warned you to stop going after my daughter. I'm sorry, but I really think that I've been very calm and collected this whole time. The only one throwing around insults and using aggressive language here is you. Oh, why am I even bothering to talk to someone that I've already fired? Can't you just shut your mouth, pack up your desk, and leave already? I already told you that I never wanted to see you again. Okay then. I understand. If this is how things are going to be, then I'll leave the office today. Finally! At last you realize that even when fired, you still have to listen to me. 
I'm the boss in this part of the office, and my word is law. You wouldn't stop scolding my daughter, and now you're going to pay for ignoring a direct order from me. Now, get out of here and never ever come back. I understand. I also understand that you're incapable of seeing things objectively and that you're not suited for the position that you have. So, you should know that you are going to regret doing this. I will make sure of that. <laughs> you're telling me that you're going to try and make me regret firing you? And just what do you think you can even do against me now that you're fired, huh? Besides, I'm in charge here. So what I say goes. It's literally impossible for me to make a bad call because I'm the one who is in charge. Yes, you are the one in charge, and that's what's going to come back to bite you. Anyways, I'll be taking my leave now. Hello, Mr. Andrews. I saw the message left on my desk that you wanted me to send you a message to talk about something. What can I do for you today? I was just wondering where in the world my granddaughter has gone to. I'm sorry. I don't think I'm quite following what you mean by that, sir. Well, it really is quite simple. I'm talking about my granddaughter. I want to know where she's gone. Did something happen to her? I've been asking around, and everyone has been telling me that I should be talking to you about this. So, I would like an explanation of exactly where my granddaughter has gone to, Eugene. In fact, why don't you explain yourself to my face? I want you in my office right this moment. But sir, I'm still really confused. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't even know who your granddaughter is. Are you blind? Or just illiterate? I said that I want you up in my office to explain yourself to me right this second. Yes, of course, sir. I'm sorry for not leaving right away. I'm already heading towards the elevator as we speak. What do you want now? You've already fired me, and I've already left the building. If I didn't leave anything there, I, I don't know what we could possibly have to talk about. Emma, this isn't about you being fired. Well, it kinda is. Look, I just wanted to say that I'm very sorry about the way I treated you the other day. I may have overdone things just a little bit. I was hoping that we might be able to talk in person a little bit. Do you have some time where we can meet up to do so? Well, someone's attitude seems to have changed quite a bit now, hasn't it? Did something happen to bring about this change of heart? Again, I would just like to profusely apologize for the way that I was talking to you the other day. And I would also like to take this chance to invite you back to your position in our company. I had no idea that you were the granddaughter of the head of the company. Oh, I see. This is all because you finally figured out who I really am. Is that it? Please, you have to come back to work for us. Your grandfather ordered me to bring you back to the company at once. Hmm. Nah, I'm good. Thanks for the offer, though. What do you mean? You mean that you won't come back to work for us? You don't want your job back? I don't really see what the big deal is. I mean, I only left the company in the first place because you were telling me to. And now you're going to come back to me just three days later to try and beg for me to come back? But I apologized for what I said. I really didn't mean to fire you. It was all just one big mistake. You have to forgive me. Your grandpa actually just came back from a long business trip and when he arrived back to the office, he was really, really upset. He demanded that I go into his office, and he started yelling at me, asking about where you were, and where you had gone to. It was only then 
that I realized who you really were. I really had no idea about any of this, so please, you have to forgive my ignorance. Well, of course you didn't know about who I really was. After all, I was hiding my identity for just about everyone. Well, then that just shows that I was truly acting out of ignorance. I really had no idea at all that you were directly related to the head of the company. So please, I'm begging you again to come back. Your grandpa is very, very upset that you were let go from the company. Let's make something clear. I wasn't just let go. You fired me from the company, remember? I don't think my grandpa is upset. I think you are. Well, yes. Okay, I suppose I am the most upset out of everyone here. So please, you have to come back. I'm begging you. I'm sorry, but I've already given you my answer and it's not going to change. I won't be going back to work there. You can go back all you want, but the fact of the matter is that I was fired. I can't just go back. I'll have that you were fired erased completely from your record. It won't show that as having happened at all. There's no reason why you shouldn't be able to return. We can pretend like nothing ever happened at all, and you can just go back to your old position. Not only that, but if you come back, I'll apologize to you in front of the whole staff. I'll even talk to my daughter and make sure she knows that she needs to work just like everyone else does. So you mean to tell me that you could have done that this whole time, but you're only choosing to do so now? You know, if you had just done that from the start, then you wouldn't be in trouble like you are right now. But like I said, it's too late to try and change things now, so why don't you just give up already? Please, you have to come back. I'm begging you. Please don't say no to this. If the company president finds out the truth about how and why you were let go, then things are going to get really bad for me. Well, yes. I suppose if my grandpa knew how you were treating his staff, he would get quite upset. And you should also know that I'm his favorite granddaughter. Of course, even when I started here, he warned me that I wouldn't be given special treatment just because of that. You have to believe me when I say that I really had no idea about any of that at all. I'm terribly sorry for the mix-up. You really don't have to apologize to me anymore, you know. I already told you that it's not going to change anything. If anything, the company would be better off losing you and your no-good lazy daughter. You... You don't need to talk about my daughter like that. But why shouldn't I when it's the truth? Of course, you're not better than she is when it comes to the way you both treat people. Please, don't you think you're being just a little too harsh right now? I know that you're the CEO's granddaughter, but still. I'm only giving you my honest opinion about the two of you. And I know that if my grandpa knew the truth about the two of you, that he would fire you both on the spot. And he knows how to pull enough strings to make sure that you never work in this industry again. He wouldn't really do that, would he? I mean, I've been working for this company for almost 30 years. He wouldn't take all that away, would he? 30 years is nothing compared to the decades of life that my grandpa has put into this company. Of course, I didn't mean to apply otherwise. But that's just another reason why my grandpa has so much sway in the business. You might want to kiss the chances of you ever getting this high of a position in a company like this ever again. Please don't do this. Surely we can work something out. You have to understand that I'm a father. I have a family to take care of. That excuse might have worked on me if not for the fact that you clearly haven't raised your daughter right at all. And when she started working here, she was like the spitting image of you and all her awful attitude. I hid who my family was so that I could be treated equally in the office. You were encouraging your daughter to act however she wanted because of who she was. Please, you really do have this all wrong. If I had only known who your grandpa was, then I would have never talked to you the way that I did. 
You have to know that I would have never said the things that I did. I would have never done any of this at all. I'm so sorry for everything. So, I'm begging you, one more time, please come back. And I am telling you the same answer one more time. Not going to happen. Please, I'm asking as your supervisor to come back and work for us again. You aren't actually going to turn down a request from your superior, are you? <laughs> you still think you're my superior? How can that be when I don't even work for you anymore? The moment you fired me, you lost any power or influence you had over my life. But, please, just do as I say this one time. That's all I need. You really expect me to just act like nothing happened between us at all? <laughs> That's ridiculous and unrealistic. <laughs> I really don't have time to carry on with this stupid conversation any longer. But if you don't come back, then I'm going to be in serious trouble. Don't you get that? If you don't come back, then both Lily and I might end up getting fired because of this. You have to come back and save us. You'll get your job back too. Everyone is going to win if you do this. You're acting as if I would have anything real to gain by helping you. But you're only asking that I come back to save your own skin. You were the one that fired me, and now you will have to live with that decision. I told you from the very start that you were being unreasonable and that you'd regret this. Now, if this is all that you have to say to me, I would appreciate it if you just left me alone instead. Please don't do this, Emma. I'm begging you, you have to come back, you have to save us, I'll even make Lily apologize to you, we're both begging you to come back. And I'm telling you that you can keep your worthless apologies to yourself because I don't want them. Anyways, enjoy what time you have left at the company! I may be fired, but at least I'll be taking the two of you on my way out. And good luck ever trying to find a job for you or your daughter in this town again. After that, Emma went to her grandfather and revealed all. Upon learning the truth of why his daughter wasn't showing up for work, ooh, Mr. Andrews was furious and fired Mr. Sharp and his daughter right away. He told them that their names are going to be blacklisted and that no company in this industry would ever hire them again. Mr. Andrews approached Emma and offered her a position as the head of a new subsidiary being opened by the company. Emma agreed to come back as the head of the new company and was quickly being praised by her employers for her shrewd decision making and empathy towards her employees. Mr. Sharp wasn't able to find a decent job after being fired, and even his wife ended up leaving him. <laughs> In his mid-fifties and jobless, Mr. Sharp and Lily had no choice but to take on several part-time jobs just to try and make ends meet. We had a lot of customers today. I know it's just before a white day, but we have to work two hours overtime. We still have the fair going on from Valentine's Day. I hear it's like this every year. By the way, Anna, what? You're working tomorrow as well, right? Yes, I'm also working too. We're going to go home at the same time. I see. So you know? What? You're playing hard to get. Hard to get? That makes you even cuter, though. I guess I will let it slide this time. So, what are you talking about? After we finish work, do you want to go out for a drink? Sorry, I have plans that day. Also, I can't drink. Really? Then we can just go out for dinner. I shouldn't force you, though, because you wouldn't like that, right? As I've said, I have plans tomorrow. Tomorrow is white day. You don't have to be stubborn on a day like that. Sorry, I really have plans tomorrow. Okay, okay. Anyways, after we finish work, let's meet up in front of the store. As I'm saying, I have plans tomorrow. I'm excited for tomorrow. Anna? How can you do this? Even though I was a little late finishing work, how can you go home before me? It couldn't be helped because there was trouble at work. Anyways, I reserved a bar with a private room. It's the bar we went to last year at the end of the year. Oh yes, 
You said you can't drink, but you were trying to seem cute, right? You're so cute. I'm not going to let you go tonight. Hey, Steve? What are you talking about? I told you I have plans today. I told you I couldn't go. Are you kidding me? Are you still being so stubborn about it? How many times you ask me, I can't change my plans. I told you, you don't have to be like that today. Where are you right now? I'm going to my destination. Okay. Anyways, bye. Okay. See you later. Where are you? Hello? Are you still being stubborn again? You're my Anna. Oh, I said it. Come on now, I'm waiting for you. And I have to be here soon. I'm going to be mad. Hey, it's cute that you're stubborn, but it's not good to keep your boyfriend waiting on the first date. I don't think it's acceptable. Hey, Anna. The bar that I reserved kicked me out because it was time. I'm mad now. You can be stubborn, but there are limits. You're going too far. If you come now and apologize, I will forgive you. I have a hotel reserved by the station, so come there. I'll be waiting at the lobby. I'm going to make love to you and punish you in the morning. What the fuck? Oh, are you finally going to stop being stubborn? It sucks that you haven't even read my text. I told you one million times. I'm not being stubborn. I never wanted to go to your place. What? Why? I want to ask that question. I've told you over and over again that I can't go because I have plans. And why do you think I'm going tonight? It's disgusting and I'm scared. Also, I have a boyfriend. What? I had a date with my boyfriend today. Stop texting me creepy things. How can you say that when you ask me out? Ask you out? I asked you out, Steve? Yes. That's why I set up the date so I could reply to you. But you have a boyfriend. Stop playing around. Wait a minute. How can you mess with my feelings? I never asked you out, Steve. What? Are you going to pretend that you never asked me out? As I'm saying, I never asked you out. But you gave me chocolate on Valentine's Day, Anna. Valentine's chocolate? On February 14th. You slipped some chocolate into my bag. I didn't know it was you for the first few days, but on the letter I came with, there was the initials AS. And then I realized it was you, because you're the only girl at work. Can I say something? What? On February 14th, I had some errands to run out of town, so I didn't work. What? So I wasn't at the shop, so I couldn't have put the chocolate in your bags. What? So that means it wasn't me to ask you out. What? Are you kidding me? If you check the shift on the day, you will understand. Then who asked me out? I'm sorry, but I don't know. What? If it's not you, I don't know who it is. I don't know what to do. Why don't you ask the other employees? Then you can ask them. Oh, why me? Because if I ask them directly, it's not romantic. Please. She's going to be my first girlfriend. It's so cute. I'm already in love with her. Please. Okay. Are you going to help me? I will, but I don't think I can guarantee that I will find her. I'll just ask a couple of people who might know. Whatever happens, don't blame me. You have to promise that. Okay, I promise. So please find my sweetheart. Okay, wait a minute. Hey Allison, I'm so sorry to text you so late at night. I want some advice. Hey Anna, what's up? Steve asked me to do something complicated. Steve from work? Yes. He's saying he got Valentine's chocolate from someone with the initials AS. He said that he found it in his bag. He doesn't know who gave it to him, so he wants to know. Oh well, why did he tell you? He thought it was me because my name is Anna Swan, but it's not me. I see. I know you've worked here for a long time, but I was wondering if you could help me. Actually, that was me. What? Seriously? I put the chocolate in Steve's bag. It's my feelings for him. But don't you have a husband? But I got divorced in January. Oh, really? My name is Allison, so I wrote the A, and since my last name changed back to my old last name, it starts with an S. Oh, that's why an S. I guess he didn't know I got divorced. I see. I found out who sent you the chocolate, Steve. Seriously? I understand. Wait. Don't tell me who it is. Why? Because she's making a surprise. She confessed to me in such a cute way. I think I have to appreciate that. Okay. So, Anna. 
Tell her that I'm waiting for her at the hotel. But I think you should know who it is. No. It's going to be a surprise when we meet. Okay. Are you sure? I said it before. I'm in love with her. Even if I don't know her, I love her so much. If you say so. But as I said earlier, don't blame me for anything. Okay. Tell her I'm waiting at the hotel in room 503. Tell her that I'm excited to spend a hot night with her. Are you sure? Of course. Okay. Anna! Hey. What? What is this? Hey, Steve. Don't be so cold. Why is Allison here? What do you mean, why? Allison gave you the chocolate. What? But she's married. Well, she got divorced, so she's single now. Wait. Even though she's single, she's the same age as my mom. Why? That's what I told you. Help me. You told me you wouldn't blame me for it. But... Sorry, I promise, promise. Help me. The next morning, Allison texted me a very happy message. Did you know that Steve is a virgin? So I was nice to him until the morning. So I guess Allison and Steve's hot night on white day? Now everybody knew about their night at work. Steve quit work and ran back to his hometown, but Allison? She was so positive she thought that since he went back to his hometown, he wants to marry her. So she told everyone at work that she's going to quit her job because she's getting married. She followed Steve to his hometown. After that, I was too scared to ask what happened. 